Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Go ahead, let's get our Bibles out. Praise the Lord. Um, we can go to Matthew 28. That's where we kind of left off last week. We're talking about the authority of the believer. We as believers have divine authority granted unto us or delegated to us. And the word authority simply, in a, the most simplistic form, is delegated power. Now remember, Jesus said all power. Here in Matthew 28, he says all, uh, Canaan says all power is given unto me. Well, there are two different words in the Greek translated power. One is dunamis which is where we get the English word dynamite. Okay, that's where we get our English word dynamite from the Greek word dunamis. And it means power. It means explosive power. It means, you know, the power to, to do something. But then there's another word that we translate power in the King James Bible, which is really, uh, it really limits the scope of the understanding of the word. And in the Greek, it is exousia. And that word exousia means authority. You see, you might have dunamis power, but you might not have the authority to use it. Hello? Are you here? See, a police officer may have power. He might have a, 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 a huge weapon, and he has the authority to use it. You may not be in a situation where somebody's robbing you, you got the authority to go shoot somebody or whatever. You might have the power, but you don't have the exosia necessarily. Okay? Um, you might buy a, a uh, tank on the... On the uh, Scrap market, whatever. You want to buy your T1 tank or whatever, you're going to run around. You don't have the authority to go to war. Got the tank, got the power, got the dunamis, but you don't have the exosia. You don't have the authority. So what is authority? Authority is delegated dunamis. In other words, it is the right to use the power of God. You all with me? Meaning that when you exercise the authority, heaven stands behind it. As we were saying last week as we were wrapping up, that when you speak something in the name of Jesus, when you say, in the name of Jesus, I command cancer to leave my body according to the word of God. 1 Peter 2.24 says, by the stripes of Jesus, I was healed. Isaiah 53.5 says, by the stripes, I was healed. And Matthew chapter 8, verse 17 uh, says that, you know, that they came to him, brought him sick and possessed. He cast the spirits out and healed their bodies with his word. Then it might be fulfilled, which that was spoken by the prophet Isaiah himself, took our infirmities and carried our sicknesses. Glory to God. Amen. So when you speak the word of God and say in the name of Jesus, that name of Jesus is the exercising of the delegated authority, meaning it's just like Jesus himself came down and spoke those words. Amen. Hallelujah. And 99.99% .99 of Christians, if you could say, if Jesus came down and said, be healed, would you? Oh, yeah. Well, see, we have the authority to speak, the delegated power through his name to speak what he wants done according to the word of God, and it's just like him saying it. Amen. Now remember, I believe it's over in Jude, it said that even the angel did not, um, did not rebuke the devil. All right? He said, the Lord doth rebuke thee. Now see what? The angels didn't have the right to use the name of Jesus. The church does. But he was in, in, in spiritual talk saying the same thing. He was saying in the name of Jesus because he said, the Lord doth rebuke thee. And you see, when, when we say the name of Jesus and we exercise delegated power or authority, it's just like Jesus himself speaking and decreeing and declaring it right there on the spot. Amen. Getting off the throne, coming to the earth, making himself visible and declaring, you're healed. Devil, you're rebuked. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we have been given that. Well, let me, let me say this. How did we lose it in the first place? We talked about this, how Adam in the Garden of Eden, Eve took the fruit, gave to her husband with her, and they knew they were naked. They transferred their power over to Satan. Adam was the first man to ever be born again. See, he was born with the life of God in him. He was created life. Knew no death. That's why his body, after sin, it took 900 years for sin to, to, to distort his body so it would die. 
because there was so much life and never knew death. It wasn't until they tasted death. Now, remember we said this a couple weeks ago, that when they t- God said, don't eat the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and the day thou surely do it, thou shalt surely die. And see, people will, he didn't fall over dead. See, God didn't really tell the truth. No, 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 no. The Hebrew phrase there, see, when you've got a word-for-word translation, you sometimes lose the full essence of what was said. We like, I mean, it's good to have word for word, but some, sometimes you just lose the, the full essence. The Hebrew phrase, in dying thou sh- and when you, sh- you shall surely die, in the Hebrew actually says this, in dying you shall die. In other words, you're going to die spiritually, and then you'll die physically. Now, the word death in the Bible never see, means cease to exist. See, when you die, you don't cease to exist. Well, I die physically. Your body, no, your body. The word death really carries and conveys the thought of separation. See, when you die physically, what? The body without the spirit is dead. It's separated. The body can't function without a human spirit in it. So physical death is the separation of the human spirit from the human body. And the body can't function. What is spiritual death? It is the separation of the human spirit from the Father of life, God. So when you become separated from God, you are spiritually dead. You don't cease to exist. There's no life in you. So it means, and what's the second death? Eternal death. It is eternal separation of the human spirit from God. Okay? So it doesn't mean cease to exist. It means to be separated. So... God told Adam and Eve, in the day you eat the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall, and dying you will die. When you became separated from me, you set yourself on a course that your spirit would be separated from the body. In dying, you shall die. Well, in that, what happened was, when Adam committed high treason in the Garden of Eden, Satan became his spiritual father. Now look over in John 8, 44 real quick. <coughs> Now, I'll be honest, I've got scriptures here, but I'm ministering mostly out of my spirit on this. I'm just letting the Holy Spirit take and take me where he wants to take me, okay? I have found some, there, there's some times when you do things, you just got to follow the Holy Ghost. Let's back up John 8, chapter 40, um, 30, 30, 33. Let's go to John 8, 33, all right? They answered him and said, We be Abraham's seed, and we were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Now remember, Jesus said, You'll know the truth, and, you shall be, and the truth will make you free. And what does it work? What is truth? He says, Sanctify them through thy word, thy word is truth. Oh, listen, truth is not Einstein's theory. I mean, there are, there are laws of physics and that kind of stuff, but it's not the truth he's talking about here. Okay? And even when you go true that, there's a lot of people true that and they ain't true, they ain't true in that to the right thing. Come on now. So Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you or set you free. They answered him and said, we are Abraham's seed. And we were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou you should be made free? And Jesus said, verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. Now let me tell you something. All of these people who run around with this crazy grace narrative that's out of balance with what grace really is in the Bible, saying you can do whatever you want, it's okay, you're, uh, everything's, everything's wonderful, everything's lovely, didn't listen to Jesus. Because he said when, you, when you, you yield to sin, you're the servant of sin. God doesn't want you to be bound by sin. He wants you free from sin. Jesus said you'll know the truth. And the truth will make you or set you free. It is not truth, I can do whatever I want and get away with it. That's not truth. The servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth forever. If the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Woo, glory to God. I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me, because my word has no place in you. There are people asking questions right now. How can people be making decisions they're making in life right now and name the name of Christ because his word has no place in them. When you do not submit and yield to the word of God and let it it take and have final authority, whether, whether you like it or not, it has no place in you. I'll preach to the mic stands. I... 
Yeah, I, see, I heard it say, yeah, go, glory to God. Come on now. Where was it? Oh, Abraham. You know, da, 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 da. Did I miss something here? That's right. Yeah, I know that you're Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you. I speak that which I have seen, which my, uh, I have seen with my father, and ye do that which you have seen with your father. Oh, now Jesus is getting ready to mess up their theology. As I said, Jesus is about to mess them up big time. Now he said, I, when, you, when you're watching my life, you're watching the father. Because I'm only doing what the father does. Come on now. And you, I've been watching you, and you're doing what your daddy do. Come on now. That's right. You're doing exactly what your daddy do. Of course, they're not happy about it. And they said, Abraham's our father. And Jesus said, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. Yeah. Well, that went over big time. Hallelujah. But now you seek to kill me, a man that's told you the truth. Now, boy, have y'all been on Facebook lately? Let somebody say something. Come on now. Let somebody say something against their political persuasion and see what happens. Jesus. My Lord Jesus. I mean Christian folk. Cussing. Lying. I mean, but I mean, just go absolutely bonkers nuts. What are they doing? They're doing the works of, of, of Satan. Hello? Now, I've been staying away from political stuff on Facebook. You know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to engage in a bunch of that stuff on Facebook. It's just, you know, I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to vote according to my conscience and the word of God. And my conscience is governed by the word of God. I am not going to vote for who could do what for me. Amen. That is out of the equation. I said, that is out of the equation. There will be no voting by Ed Taylor based on what's in it for me. It will be what's godly and what's right. Amen. Amen. And let me tell you something. There's one issue I cannot get around. Forget everything else. I cannot get around the cutting up of babies in the womb and dragging them out piece by piece or letting them come out of the womb partially and taking a pair of scissors and shoving it in their brain at the space of the spine and sticking a suction tube up there and sucking the brains out and then delivering it dead. And there is a candidate who supports that. Then I'm going to leave it right there. If you can vote for that, I don't, I, God help you. That is heinous. That is just heinous. Have you seen the pic? They had a picture. Somebody actually got a picture of an aborted baby where they cut the parts apart. The head off, the arms off, the legs off, and pulled them out one by one and laid it on a table. I don't even know how the doctors even sleep at night. I don't know how they sleep at night. What, they got the spirit of darkness on them. It is demonic. It is demonic. That is a, it is a scourge on our nation. I said it is a scourge on our nation. And either America wakes up and stands in righteousness or judgment will come. Judgment will come on our nation. Well, I don't believe in judgment. I don't give a rip what you believe in. It will come. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves, repent and seek, repent from their sins and seek my face, then I'll hear from heaven and heal their land. If we don't repent and we don't stop this, how many babies have been aborted since uh, R.V. Wade? Like 50 or 60 million? We, church, have got to stand in righteousness. Anyway, that's enough said. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for. I'm not endorsing a candidate, but I'm telling you who I, what, I can't, what, I, what I can't vote for. Not who, but what. I can't support that. As a Christian, I cannot support that in any form. I'm just have to be a little careful today because we're inside the polling area. <laughs> Hallelujah.
Where was I? Why do you not understand my speech? Because you cannot hear my word. Remember when Jesus appeared to uh, John on the Isle of Patmos? And he spoke to the, se and he said to the, to the church at Laodicea and to the church here and the church there. He spoke to the seven churches. But there's a phrase he used over and over and over again in those discourses to the seven churches. Church at Ephesus, the church at Laodicea, the different churches. He spoke seven, seven letters to seven churches. John said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Remember? But there's a phrase that Jesus would use. He that has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Jesus is saying, what is this? To religious people, you're not hearing what I'm saying. <clears throat> Amen. You're not hearing what I'm saying. Now, here we go. Are you ready for this one? Now, we're to, Jesus is talking to religious folk. He showed up right in the middle of a, of a dancing, hooping, I mean shouting service and said this, ye are of your father the devil. Mm. Ye are of your father the devil and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaketh of his own for he is... The <coughs> <laughs> he is a liar and the father of it. Because I tell you the truth, you believe. People will get mad when you tell them the truth. They'll get mad with you. They had a friend that posted some blog on Facebook the other day, and they cleaned their Christians, cleaned her clock. We're just supposed to walk in love. Love does not cover or, or not, not give truth. Love reveals truth. Always. If I love you, I'll give you the truth. I won't lie to you. Amen? I'm not going to tell you it's all right to shoot up and, be, and, you, and, and, and you're going to be healthy. That's a lie. Well, yeah, but you don't want to hurt my feelings. I like shooting up. I like putting the hair, I like to put the morphine or the heroin up my veins. I like the way it makes me feel. Have you ever seen anybody that's been on heroin for, 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 for a few years? Uh, we used to have somebody in church, and they had a really good friend. It was a girl, the friend of the wife's. And uh, they, they asked me, said, can you counsel her? I said, well, we'll bring her in. Because she, she'd, she'd been a Christian. I actually met her in Bible school. But she met this guy, shacked up with him. Girls, he's a liar. He wants you to shack up. He's going to lie to you. He's he going to lie to you. I said, he's going to lie to you. Having game. Call what now? <laughs> Having game. Having game. Well, his lie is a game. All right. He, he got, Jeff, thank you, Jeff. I didn't know that word. Yeah, thank you. All right. Got, got a cultural verbal chasm, the chasm there. They just got, they got uh, covered over. Yeah. He going to lie to you. Baby, come on, move in with me. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't going to run around on you. You lying dog like a hound dog on a hot summer afternoon. He be taking care of business at night with you and taking care of his business with the neighbor the next day while you at work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, don't you listen to him. I said, don't you listen to him. Well, she got hooked up with this guy. He got her hooked on heroin. Now, I'm going to tell you, I saw the girl, I, and, and, and I could tell she had to have been beautiful when she was healthy. But she was 20, 25 pounds at minimum underweight. She looked like a walking bag of bones, death warmed over. She couldn't get off of it. She had gone through treatment. She had gone through rehab. She had been on Dilaudid, you know, to, to try to wean her off. Couldn't get off. And couldn't help her because she wouldn't leave the guy. I mean, you, you, and she would keep herself in that position. You know, he, had, he, he, just, he had her. Okay? There, there's lies out there, folks. And the devil will lie to you. And when, you're of your, when, when the father of lies, the devil begins to speak, he's a liar. And when, when people come tell you the truth, people who want the lie will get mad with you. So they took, her, they took their friend to the cleaners on Facebook. Because she wasn't, she was stated what she stood on some things. And they just, oh, we got to walk in love. Let me tell you something. This narrative that the world uses about love and the, the Christians have picked up on is unbiblical. 
And I'm getting ready to, go, I'm getting ready to segue into my next, where, I'm, where I was planning on starting at when I started. <laughs> we finally got there. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. G Remember when Adam sold out his authority to the devil? See, they get mad at Jesus for telling the truth. When Adam sold his authority to the devil, the book of Corinthians, uh, one of the Corinthians, in whom the God of this world, 2 Corinthians 4 4. 2 Corinthians 4 4, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them, lest they should see the light of the glorious gospel and believe. How did that happen? Adam sold his authority to the devil. He was born again from life unto death. He became spiritually dead, spiritually separated from God being. He was alienated from the life of God. Satan became the God of this world. The love of God is not you can keep doing what you're doing. Ephesians chapter 2 says, Even when we were dead and our trespasses and sins, he raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. What did John 3.16? We all, all know John 3.16. Okay? For God so loved the wor world. I can't hear I can't hear a thing you're saying. I wouldn't say anything political. Well, pfft. bless their heart, because I didn't say anything political. I do have free speech, and we were rented before you guys, so anyway. All right. Bless their hearts. Bless their hearts. Anyway. There's no campaigning. <laughs> I didn't campaign. I didn't endorse, did I endorse a candidate? No. Did I unendorse a candidate? No. no. All right. Hallelujah. Didn't call nobody's name. All right. So anyway, where was I before we got interrupted by the... the, the let's see. They'll get mad at you. They'll get mad at you. Just say truth when people get mad at you. All right. There you go. We get mad. But here's, here's the thing. The love of God is not, the love of God is not you get away with sin. What happened? While we were in sin, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. What happened? God sent his son in the time that we were in sin to deliver us from sin, how shall we that are free from sin or dead to sin live any longer therein? He didn't come to leave us in sin. He came to deliver us from sin. So the love of God is not you can stay in sin and go to heaven. The love of God is I sent your sin condition prohibited your entrance into my kingdom, so I sent my son to deliver you and bring you out. Hello. Are you here? You're going home. That God sent his son when we were dead in sin. So the love of God is not stay in sin. The love of God is because you were in sin and there was no way out of sin, I sent my son to deliver you from that. Why? Because to be alienated from God and joined to Satan is to ultimately face his destiny and fate. Which is what? Eternal damnation. God does, loved you so much. He didn't want you to face it. Satan's faith. Adam sold us all under that bondage. And so God made a plan to deliver man. Why? Because he did not want them associated with Satan. Hello? He did not want them bound by Satan. 
And so He's loved the world so much, He sent Jesus to break you out of the captivity of satanic bondage and deliver Him. That's what love does. Love comes to deliver, not to what? Condone. The narrative today from the world and has gotten into the church is God loves you, so it's okay. God, by his very own action. Now, what's this got to do with authority? Everything. Because man has lost it. Man has none. I said man has none. Until Jesus comes back. Man is hopelessly bound to Satan's authority. Even under the old covenant, he had such, such re regulations and, and restrictions of life to try to achieve a state of righteousness, he couldn't do it. The law was given to prove that we were utterly sinless and we could not deliver ourselves. It was a schoolmaster to what? Bring us to Christ. We couldn't get ourselves out of the situation. We couldn't, bring, we couldn't deliver ourselves. We were bound by Satan's dominion and authority, hopelessly bound there. And the best man could achieve, even under, under the old covenant, with all, if, they, if they did everything they did right and got enough brownie points, was to go live in Abraham's bosom, which was the upper regions of hell. It was the place of the departed saints. They couldn't go to heaven and be with the Father. Why? Because the life of God wasn't in them. They were still separated from His life. There was no access. Because Satan had the authority. I mean, how, much, how much authority did Adam have? Well, let me tell you this. Adam had as much as authority as we can see uh, what the blood cleansed in the old, on old Covenant and in the New Testament. Now remember... The Bible says that Moses built the tabernacle according to the pattern he saw in heaven. And so the, the, the holies of holies, the holy place, the outer court, all those things were what Moses saw heaven look like. Now think about this. In the holiest of holies where the veil that was 40 foot high, 60 foot wide, and 6 inches thick of woven material stood between all, everyone on, everyone in, the, in the nation of Israel and God who had come down and sit on his throne in the holiest of holies. Only once a year could the high priest go in. They believed he was just tr scotted in. He would just supernaturally pass through with a rope tied to his foot so they could drag him out. Because if he wasn't right when he got in, he was toast. And that's why they had, remember they had a pomegranate bell. They could hear him in there, ching, 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 ching. The, the bell's ringing on the hem of his garment. Hello? So, they had that going on. That high priest would go in to the, holy, the holiest of all, and he would have to put blood on the mercy seat. Why on the mercy seat? The blood had to cleanse everything man's sin touched. Man's authority went up to, but did not include, include the throne of God. That's why the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, it said that the heavenly things had to be cleansed with better things than these. The blood of Jesus. Jesus had to take his blood now see, what, why, did, why, was there a, why was the mercy seat in need of cleansing? Because that's how far man's authority went. And when he turned it over to the devil, the devil had authority up to, but not including the throne of God. And so at, the priest would go in and cleanse the mercy seats and all the other utensils. When Jesus entered, he entered in once and for all with his own blood, not with the blood of bulls and the goats and the sprinkling the ashes of a heifer, but with his own blood he entered in once and for all to obtain an eternal redemption for us. He went into the mercy. Why? Because that's where man's authority had gone. Sin had tainted heaven. Because of Adam's, God had given Adam that much authority. And so Jesus had to cleanse it all with his own blood. That's how far it went. 
Man's authority. I said man's authority went up too, but did not include the throne of God. Why? God loved humanity. All humanity was going to face the penalty of Satan. So God's love does not say, Hey, I love you. Come on in. You can live in sin and come on in. God's love says you're bound by your father, the devil, and I love you, and I am going to send my son to purchase you out. Of, remember, redeem, to purchase, to buy back. I'm going to purchase you out of that state. Reconcile you to myself. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Hallelujah. God sent Jesus to take a people, uh, uh, the entire world, who was alienated from God, from the life of God, so we could be reconciled to the Father. Why? Because being reconciled to the Father means you didn't face the penalty of Satan. But when you're of your father, the devil, you will face his penalty. So God says, I love you. And because I love you, I will reconcile you. Hello? I said, hello? Amen. Thank God for it. I said, thank God for it. Thank God. How to, well, what, what happened in that? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, what's God? Satan <laughs> has authority over man. So what's Jesus got to come back and get? The authority. He has to return and get back Satan's the authority that Adam gave to Satan. Go with me, if you will, to Luke, the fourth chapter. Chapter 1, chapter 4, verse 1. Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost. Now, how do you get filled with the Holy Ghost? Well, remember, he was in, he baptized John. The Spirit of a dove came down on him. My, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And then it says, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan, was led, Jordan, was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Being forty days tempted of the devil, in those days he did eat nothing. And when he were ended, he was after hunger. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that he be made bread. And Jesus said, um, it is written, Thou shalt not live by bread alone, but by every word out of the mouth of God. Now, here becomes the temptation of the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. All right? The three things that Eve fell for in the garden, she fell for all three. Those are all the sins of life. They're either going to be the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, or the pride of life. You're going to fall in one of those categories. Next one. And the devil, taking him up into a high place, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time and said, All this power... Authority will I give you. And the glory of them, for it is delivered unto me. Who delivered it unto him? Adam. 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 The devil's a liar. He can't tell the truth. No, no, no. You've got to understand. Let's finish this. For it's delivered unto me, and whomsoever I will, I will give it. If thou wilt, thou for worship me, all shall be thine. What's the lie? Up until this point, he had told truth. At that moment, he tells a lie. If you'll worship me, I'll give it to you. That's the lie. The other part is, see, Jesus knew. He, did you notice Jesus didn't say, no, nah, it ain't your power to do? He didn't say that. The, Satan said, all the, all the authority of these kingdoms is mine. And I can give it to whoever I want to. He won't give it to nobody. As a matter of fact, he was, he's a greedy, money-grubbing dog. Yeah. Just, just like most politicians. <laughs> just like most politicians. Bunch of money-grubbing dogs. Hallelujah. Huh? That's not that's yeah, that's facts. That's not political, that's facts. Praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. I don't care what the devil's going to do. So, he tells Jesus, I've got all this authority. Jesus says, didn't say, no, you don't. Folks, that's what Jesus came to get. That's what he was there for. And Satan knew that's what he was there for. So what did he do? He tried to trick him. Man, why go to the cross? Why die? Why do all the things that the fathers ask you to do? If you'll worship me, I'll give it to you. That was the lie. The lie was, if you'll worship me, I'll give it to you. In other words... Obi-Wan Kenobi's failure will be complete. <laughs> Obi-Wan didn't tell you who your father was. Remember, in back, back in Ezekiel, you'll study, you'll find out that Satan walked the, walked the earth covered in diamonds and topazes and rubies and emeralds and jewels. And he said, I will ascend my throne into the heavens and I'll be as the most high. This is before Adam. What Satan wanted was to take over the throne of God. He had gotten man's authority in the garden. He was only one step away from the whole thing. And so he brings Jesus at the time of his most, most difficult physical time, 40 days of fasting. After he's hungry, he's on the brink of starvation. All these kingdoms are mine. I got the power, I got the authority of them. And the glory of them. And I can get to whoever I want to. And if you'll worship me, I'll give it to you. Join me and we'll rule the universe together. Right. Now, it's impossible. I mean, Darth Vader is the devil. Got it? The lie was only happened when he said, I'll give it to you. Because if Jesus had bowed down and worshipped him, Satan would have taken over heaven. Another, another quick thought. God can't lie. Why? Satan's the father of all liars. If God lies, he becomes subordinate to Satan. What's that mean? God can't... Sovereignty does not allow God to violate his word. Well, God heals who he wants to heal. By his stripes, you were healed. Amen. Amen. God will not withhold. How shall he who spared not his own son, not also with him freely, give us all things? God will not withhold from you that which he has, his son shed his blood to purchase for you. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So, we're here in Luke. Okay, if you'll worship me, but Jesus says... What? Get thee behind me, Satan, for it's written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou worship. Satan had the authority. Jesus came to get the authority. Because until he got man's authority back, man was under the one who had man's authority, which was Satan. There was no way out. God had delegated authority to man in the beginning. That had dominion over the earth, subdue the earth, replenish the earth. Be fruitful and multiply. That was God delegating that authority for all the things that God created under Adam's authority. When Adam committed high treason, he turned it over to the devil. Satan had control of all that. Now, Adam's lease, apparently, from what we can find out in Scripture, has a time limit on it. Remember the demons when Jesus came and the pigs? As you come to 20 minutes before, the time. So Satan knows his days are short. He knows the clock's running out. Hello? He knows he's in a heap of trouble eventually. And the only way he can win is hopefully he can find somebody to overthrow God before it's all over. Ain't going to happen. Why? He's already had his tush whooped. Jesus spoiled principalities and powers. Man, he showed them openly, triumphing over them in it. Glory to God. It's already settled. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to God. But Jesus came to get the authority back that Satan got from Adam. We get this mindset in the church when you get saved, just hang on somehow, you'll make it to heaven. Instead of, the Bible says he's coming back for a glorious church, 
having not spot or wrinkle. Amen. And so he's coming back for a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle. Glory be to God. I say glory be to God. That is not, but some folk want to have the barely make it in church. Or the, oh dear Jesus, make it in by the skin of my teeth church. Or make it in somehow, some way. I said somehow, some way. We're going to make it in victorious. We're the triumphant church. We're the winning church. We're not the defeated church. And I'm telling you, it may look like in the world system right now, we got our teeth kicked out. The devil's got a foot on our head. But I am telling you that, you know, I love this. The prophet went and whined to God. I'm the only one left. There's nobody but me. Oh, Jesus. God said, I have reserved unto myself 7,000 that have not bowed their knee to Baal. Hallelujah. And I want you to know that God has a people and God has a remnant that has not bowed their knee to the world system and the world way and to the, com- and to the wisdom of this world that is earthly, sensual, and devilish. So the Bible says, the wisdom of this world is earthly, sensual, and devilish. They've not bowed their knee. Hallelujah. And the glorious church arises. So what's not happening in America? I'm going to tell you, pack up your bags and go to Nigeria for a little while. They'll put the American church to shame. God is moving in Cuba. God is moving in Africa. God is moving in the Orient. God is, let me, God is moving in China. We know of a person that, that has, had, had a business model. He went into the Chinese and wanted to go bring his business in, business into the country. They said, sure. And, uh, he said, look, we'll hire a bunch of people. Have, we'll give a lot of junk. Fine. He said, now look, one, one of the things we have to do is we have to have uh, leaders. We, we create leaders within the people. Fine. And they have to have business meetings every week with their, with their staff and talk to their people. You know, fine. Well, look, now listen, we, we use the Bible as our, as our model for leadership. Fine. The Chinese government is printing Bibles in Chinese for them to use in the Bible studies in these, in these, in these businesses. And their, their weekly staff meetings are Bible studies. God's moved. Brother Hagin said before he died, he said the iron curtains come down. He said the bamboo curtain will come down before Jesus comes back. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Jesus will have his way. Jesus will get the job done. I'm telling you, we're going to be the glorious church. There will be a greatest ingathering the world has ever known because the church will rise up and recognize her authority and stop, and stop Mickey Mousing around. God, listen, God's going to separate the wolves and, from the sheep. He's going to separate the tares from the wheat. And those that are in the church that are being stupid, he's not going to put up with it for so much longer. And he's going to raise up his remnant. And his remnant is going to rise up. And no matter what the Supreme Court says, and no matter what a politician says, no matter what laws are passed, you can't stop God. And God will kick the doors down, and God will bring in a great end gathering, hallelujah, so that the King of kings and the Lord of lords can return in glory to a glorious church, hallelujah. And we're going out in a blaze of glory. We're not going out like, oh my God, we barely made it in. We're not the spirit of 66. Remember that little picture of the spirit of 66? Got the drummer, got the flag, and they're, they're all bandaged up, and they're barely, no, glory to God, hallelujah. We're marching in victorious. We're marching in triumphant. We're marching in as, as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God because Jesus has made a way and we're going to recognize our authority and we're going to take our place. Glory to God. And there's nothing that the spirit of the world can do to stop us. The kingdom of God suffers violence, but the violent take it by force. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. And if that's you think that's political tough. I am telling you, we've, we've, we've gotten caught, too caught up. We've gotten too caught up with worrying. Listen, as, 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 as a citizen, I consider what's going on. As a Christian, I'm going to put my confidence in God. I'm not going to be uptight. 
I'm going to rest in Jesus. I'm going to do the right things according to the Spirit of the Holy, the Holy Spirit. But I am going to know this, that no matter what's going on in the natural, Jesus is the head of the church. And if people, if, if God has to send angels down and take Herod's out, Herod got up one day and they said he's a god. The angel smote him. And he was eaten of worms. That was not a pleasant death. I mean, got worms running around the inside, eating them up. Yeah. Yeah. God's going to have his way. I said, God's going to have his way. And the greatest thing gathered this planet has ever seen will take place. Don't think China, there are six, I think six, well, well, there's a billion people in China. You think Jesus is going to let a billion people just go to hell and not get in there? He's already working. There's an underground church already working. Let me say this. The, I, I did not like the handover of Hong Kong back to the Chinese. But you know what? It's an open door for the gospel to move out of Hong Kong because there's now freedom to move in and out of the city. And they're not shutting down all the stuff because it brings so much money into the nation. So now people are going to be moving in and out of the city of Hong Kong and the gospel is going into the nation. God, God has his way. Sometimes we see things that we don't recognize and don't think they're the right thing, but God knows more about it than you do. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the anointing of the Spirit of God. And we do thank you for our authority as believers. Lord, we know that the word says that aprons and handkerchiefs were given to Paul. They were taken from his body. Hallelujah. And they went into the sick and evil spirits went out of them and their bodies were made whole. So Father, we lay hands on these prayer claws in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the anointing of God that goes into them in the Jesus name. We thank you that because the power of God goes into these, when they're laid on the sick, they'll be made whole from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. That every disease and every evil spirit operating in them will go out of them in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you this anointing is transferable by the power of God. We thank you that it's laid on them. They'll be transferred into these bodies and into their minds. And we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. We decree them every whit whole in Jesus' name. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.